program will take a tour of the digestive systems of different livestock species. We will cover prehension, comparison of the different digestive systems, monogastrics or simple stomached animals including poultry, and take a brief look at the digestive systems of ruminants. Following each section, a series of review questions will be presented. Answers are provided in the teacher's key. You may stop the program to discuss a topic or to allow more time to answer questions. Your host is Dr. Kevin R. Pond. Dr. Pond received his Bachelor of Science degree from Cornell University and both his master's and doctorate from Texas A&M University. He began his teaching career at Texas A&M and then taught for several years at North Carolina State University. He is now professor and chair for the Department of Animal Science and Food Technology at Texas Tech University. Dr. Pond has been awarded numerous teaching awards and was chosen outstanding young animal scientist in education. Besides his teaching duties, Dr. Pond contributes to education through journal articles, reports, manuscripts, and textbook contributions and authorships. Dr. Pond is co-author of Basic Animal Nutrition and Feeding, a leading collegiate textbook for animal nutrition. Also joining us is Bo Brock, Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. Dr. Brock is a graduate of Texas A&M University. Dr. Brock assists us with the laparoscopic procedures. The prehension of food is the way the animal will gather the food. Uh, if we talk about the pre organ of prehension in man, it would be our hands because we take our food with our hands and bring it to our mouth. In the case of a horse, for instance, the organ of prehension is its lip. The upper lip and lower lip will sort the grain or sort the grass and will be selecting what they want to consume, bring it to the mouth, and then consuming it. If we compare that to a cow, the organ of prehension in a cow is the tongue. It will take its tongue will extend it from its mouth, wrap it around the forage or grass that it's trying to consume, bring it back into the mouth, uh, bite it, and consume it. In the case of a sheep or a goat, it's very similar to that of a cow. They'll use their tongue, but they also use their lips. In fact, a sheep and goat have a split upper lip, and so it enables them to graze even closer than a cow would graze. Prehension in the chicken is somewhat different than the other livestock species in that the organ of prehension is the beak, the chicken will pick up the feed and has to use gravity to take it down to the rest of the track. So you'll see a chicken uh, moving its head forward very rapidly to throw the material to the back of its throat where it's then swallowed. When we talk about bringing the food into the mouth, then we have to have mastication occur to break down that feed. And different species masticate food differently. In the case of the horse, and I have a horse skull in front of me, the horse has the teeth structure such that it has teeth on both the upper and lower mandible jaw and these incisors are used to be able to grasp the forage once the lips have positioned them. So in the case of the, of the horse, it's going to bite down on the forage, uh, bring it into its mouth and chew it and consume it. In the case of a cow, it does not have an upper, upper incisors, it just has a dental pad. The same would be true for both sheep and goats. The animal brings the forage to their mouth, will, break, will come together with a dental pad and lower incisors, will rip the forage, bring it into the mouth, and chew it. Once the animal brings the food into the mouth, it's going to chew it with its premolars and molars. And if we look at this example of a horse's skull, uh, if you'll notice the teeth structure is such that only one side of the teeth can be matched together at one time. This would mean that an animal would be only chewing on one side at one time. It then might shift and move to the other side and shift and chew on that side. So in the case of a horse, as in with all animals, chewing only occurs at one side. The horse is an example of an animal that has a full set of premolars and molars, the teeth that are located along through here. It also has a full set of upper incisors and lower incisors. One thing that's slightly different in horses compared to cattle and other animals is that their teeth continue to grow. Cattle, of course, are very similar to the horse with the exception they have no upper incisors. So saying that you got bitten by a cow uh, would be impossible unless you had your fingers stuck to the back of the mouth. 
in sheep and goats and in cattle, they are going to ruminate. And so we will see an animal ruminate. And you'll watch an animal will chew on one side from one, for one bolus, will then pause, will swallow, bring up another bolus, and generally they'll switch to the other side. Prepare for questions from section one. Prehension is a term referring to A, how an animal gathers food, B, eating feed or forage, C, chewing food, D, digesting food. What is different in the mouth structure of cattle, sheep, and goats compared to horses? A, there is no difference. B, horses do not have upper incisors. C, cattle, sheep, and goats have a dental pad instead of upper incisors. D, cattle, sheep, and goats do not have a true tongue. What is the horse's organ of prehension? A, lips, B, teeth, C, hoof, D, tail. What is the chicken's organ of prehension? A, tongue, B, beak, C, crop, D, claw. What is a human's organ of prehension? A, mouth, B, teeth, C, hand, D, eye. It's very important to understand quite a bit about the digestive anatomy of different species because it's very important in how we should feed them. A ruminant is an animal that has multiple compartments rather than one stomach. Examples of ruminants are cattle, sheep, and goats. A monogastric is an animal with a simple stomach. Horses, swine, and poultry are examples of monogastrics. What we'd like to do is look at the size of the horse relative to its digestive tract. And what I have in my hand is a stomach. It's a plastinated stomach actually taken from a, a quarter horse. Of course, this was taken from was about a, about a thousand pounds. And I'd like just to show the, the uh, size compared to the whole animal. The horse I'm standing in front of is about a 1,200 pound horse. The stomach would be placed about here. And as you can see, it's very small relative to the size of the body. If we think about feeding two quarts of grain to a horse, it would fill up the entire stomach and it would have to escape, the, escape from the stomach into the small intestine. Digestive disturbances can really occur to a large extent from overfeeding of horses. The other major portion of the digestive tract um, that we're going to be looking at is going to be that of the cecum and proximal colon where digestion occurs via the microbes and that's a much larger structure. Look at the difference, differences in size of the stomach, which would be the first compartment of the digestive tract, compared to the, one of the last compartments, the cecum and proximal colon, you can see the large uh, size differential. The cecum and proximal colon will be placed uh, in the horse, um, right about like this. Oftentimes you'll see a horse that it has colic, uh, a colicking uh, horse is going to be kicking at its stomach, and what it's actually kicking at would be this structure here, the cecum at the very bottom. You see the large size relative uh, to the stomach that we just, uh, just showed, um, and you can see how the horse truly is a herbivore, and that digestion would occur right here in the cecum and proximal colon. This is a fiberglass model of a small ruminant's digestive tract. It's taken from a sheep. Um, its size and shape would be just larger on a cow. Um, a multi-compartment having four compartments. The large part is the rumen that we see here. The esophagus is coming and entering into the rumen and reticulum, the omasum, and the true stomach, the abomasum. Pre-ruminants are young nursing animals such as calves or lambs. A young ruminant, a lamb or a calf, really we need to consider as a monogastric. This is a tract from a young ruminant, a calf, and you can see all the major structures. The rumen uh, with the esophagus coming into it. The largest portion actually though is the abomasum or true stomach. And if we think about it, a young ruminant is going to be consuming milk. 
and really does not have much of a use for a rumen to digest things with microbial population. All of the structures here are, you can see, in miniature form. The esophagus coming in, the reticulum, the omasum, and the abomasum. In fact, on close inspection, we can see a very good shot of the reticular groove. The reticular groove is important to pre-ruminants because it allows the milk to travel directly from the mouth to the abomasum. Prepare for questions from Section 2. What is colic? A. An enzyme that helps digest food. B. A digestive disorder. C. A medication given to ease abdominal pain. D. An additive included in most animal feed. In horses, most digestive disturbances result from A. Underfeeding B. Overfeeding grains C. Too much water D. Overchewing hay What type of digestive systems do cattle, sheep, and goats have? A. Single B. Prehension C. Monogastric D. Ruminant Which of the following animals would have a reticular groove? A. Colt B. Calf C. Lamb D. A and C E. B and C What are two important structures of a horse's digestive system? A. Stomach B. Reticulum C. Proximal colon D. A and C E. B and C A 220-pound pig that was just recently slaughtered and we've removed the digestive tract. Um, the pig would have been oriented with its head, the anterior portion in this direction. The tail or posterior uh, portion is here. The ventral portion would be down here and the dorsal toward the top. We start out where food would enter. It would come into the mouth, into the esophagus. We'd travel down the esophagus into the stomach and this organ that's right here is the stomach. It's approximately normal size, uh, might be slightly smaller because these animals have been off feed for 24 hours. The valve to uh, keep things content in the stomach is right here, the pylorus. We have the beginning of the small intestine here. I've removed the, um, the pancreas and the bile duct was in this region to put digestive enzymes into the small intestine. Small intestine continues through here, loops back around and then all of the material you see here is small intestine. The end of the small intestine is right here and as it enters into the next compartment, it enters right here at this T-junction. This portion I have in my hand is the cecum. It's a blind sac. There's no exit from that, uh, from that area. So material could go into the cecum or alternatively can go into the large intestine, which is right here. The large intestine is a spiral structure that spirals back on itself, comes back out through, actually comes around down through here. The end of the large intestine is there and the rectum would be here and uh, feces would be eliminated from the animal at this point. Now that we've given a basic overview of the pig's gastrointestinal tract, let's go in and look closer 